Hello everyone, um, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm very excited about today's video. I'm going to be talking about the Immaculate Conception. I already shot a video on this and I realized I had some errors in it, so I'm going to have to redo it. Um, but I think we got this, this uh, thing figured out here. So I came upon a proof of the Immaculate Conception that I don't think I've seen before. Um, and this occurred to me the other day, um, and it all started with me asking something about, um, it all started with a conversation I was having w with someone about why Mary needed to have been free from, totally free from all sorts of sins, and it's because obviously Christ could not have inherited a sinful nature or original sin, um, and so that was, uh, again, I, I've seen that proof. Um, and the person asked me, said, well, you know, it's God we're talking about, right? You know, he could have done this for himself. And then, you know, you go into, oh, well, they, you know, share blood and everything like that. And, you know, how could God dwell in a sinful person? But I got to thinking about that, and I got to thinking about um, the Immaculate Conception. And so there is there is this natural question that might pop up when we say that Mary was immaculately conceived because Christ could not have dwelled in a sinful person and could not have um, inherited sinful flesh from his mother, right? Which is, why could Christ not have been the Immaculate Conception? And I think there's an obvious answer to this, um, and so I'm going to explain this here. And then I'm going to try to answer why Mary must have been Immaculate Conceived. Again, there's, there's other answers for that out there, so you can go find those yourself. But this is going to be one that's based off of, I think, the same logic. So... I'm going to just start with what I wrote down here. We know that Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. Thus, we know that Christ inherited his human nature from the Virgin Mary, right? Thus, we say that Mary must have been immaculately conceived. And then I asked, why, though, is it not possible that Christ was immaculately conceived? Again, because Christ cannot have a sinful nature. He can't have any sin on him. And so we know that his mother must not have had a sinful nature because that's where he got his human nature from. But then it goes, well, if it was possible for Mary, why could that not have been possible for Christ? <clears throat> so I'm going to try to answer this. The Immaculate Conception implies that sin, that the sin that would have been on the person was removed. Or actually, uh, it's put better here. Uh, shoot, I lost my place here. Um, okay, so the Immaculate Conception implies this. The Most Holy Virgin Mary was in the first moment of her conception by unique gift of grace and privilege of Almighty God in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of mankind, preserved free from all stain of original sin. So she was preserved free from all stain of original sin. That's what an Immaculate Conception is, right? Preserved free from all stain of original sin. Well, why could that not have been Christ? You know, if that's the, one of the reasons why Mary must have been free from original sin, why could that not have been Christ? Okay, well, let's, let's go on. Now, it's not just uh, original sin. Okay, I'm kind of confused here. It's also concupiscence, right? It's also this like tendency to be tempted by your flesh and everything like that. Mary would have been without any of that sort of thing, without any of that, because Christ could not have inherited any of that. Um, and so we know that that must be true. But again, the question is, is why could Christ not have been the Immaculate Conception? Okay. So here we go. 
For Christ to have been immaculately conceived implies that he had sin that was due to him. Again, Mary had that sin, the original sin and the concupiscence and everything like that. That was something that was due to her as being born of man. We know that in Adam, all men sinned, right? And so this was due to her. This was a consequence of, of man's sin. Um, and so... Christ could not have been the Immaculate Conception because God has no sin. So I'm going to explain this a little bit more here. Uh, thus, for his own conception to be Immaculate, Christ's conception to be Immaculate, he would have had to ha be he would have had to be his own Savior, and that's impossible because he's God, right? Therefore, it was his mother who was immaculately conceived, and it was Christ who was her Savior. God could not have been conceived by a sinful woman. I've just explained why. For to do so would imply that God had to remove sin from himself, right? That's the only way that's possible. For God to have been conceived by a sinful woman meant that he would have to remove sin from himself or keep himself from inheriting uh, a sinful nature. That's impossible because he was not due a sinful nature, right? Completely impossible. And yet God is totally without sin. Therefore, it was his mother who had to be immaculately conceived, for she had to have the sin that was due to her. Um, she had to be prevented from having that sin, right? Which still implies that Christ is her Savior. St still implies that. Um just just give me one second here. It would have been impossible for Christ to have been conceived in a fallen human. Again, I'm just repeating myself. For to do, for to do so, he would have had to remove the fallen nature that would have would come from that woman. God cannot remove a fallen nature from himself. It's impossible. He cannot do that for himself. He cannot remove or keep himself from getting a fallen nature. That's because he can't have a fallen nature. Right? Now, lest anyone say that with God all things are possible, let me say that God cannot contradict himself. God, having created a square, cannot make it a circle while it remains a square. That's impossible. It's not possible. Why? Because God created a square and defined it as not being a circle. or That's one of its properties that he defined it as, right? So that's, again, impossible. He doesn't contradict himself. God cannot sin. So for him to have been immaculately conceived implies that he stopped himself from having a sinful nature. Um, and he can't do that because... The, <laughs> yeah, let me just go on and I'll explain this further. Okay. Thus God could not have removed the original sin from himself, for he has no sin, right? If God was to be born of the Virgin Mary, he would have to have removed, or he would have had to remove the original sin from Mary, okay? He removed it, or better put, he stopped her from getting it in the first place. Now, why could God not do that for himself? Again, just, I'm, I'm going to just repeat this point. It's because he's God. He cannot stop himself from getting it right? That it, it's completely impossible for him to do that because he has no sin. The, the very idea that God would even be conceived of sinful flesh, it, it just doesn't work because he's God. He's completely without sin. He would not do that. Um, okay. Now, there's some objections to this, but before I go through those objections, I'm just going to recap what he said, okay? So, um, I can't remember what this is called, but when you, you give certain points and then you draw a conclusion off those points, that's what I'm going to do, though. Okay, so Christ is God, we know that. He inherited human flesh, we know that, unless you're a heretic. Human flesh is sinful, we know that. God cannot sin. Therefore, the flesh he inherited could not be sinful. Very easy. Okay, to remove sin is to redeem. 
So to remove sin from something or to stop someone from becoming, it going into a sinful body that's due to them, uh, that's called redemption, right? Christ is God. God has no sin. Therefore, God cannot redeem himself, right? All men born of flesh inherit original sin. Okay, we just said that. God inherited human flesh. Now, we also said to remove sin or to stop sin that is due to that flesh is to redeem. Christ is God. God has no sin. Therefore, God cannot redeem himself. Therefore, all men born of flesh inherit original sin. Therefore, Christ could not have inherited the original sin. He could not have inherited it. Okay, so all men born of flesh inherit original sin. Christ was to be born of flesh. Christ is God. God cannot sin. Therefore, God could not be born of flesh, right? Because to be born of flesh is to inherit original sin. Unless, there's an important unless here, God preserved the woman he was to be born of from inheriting original sin. He could not do this to himself. To preserve himself from inheriting the original sin implies that he was due the sin that's impossible. He couldn't do that. He could not, He can't redeem himself. He doesn't have sin, right? It's impossible for God to redeem God. That's just impossible um, because God does not need redemption, nor would it work. That's. It's a contradiction. It doesn't work, all right? So because God, because Christ, um, sorry, because Christ is... I just lost my place. Yes, Christ was to be born of flesh, right? Um, yeah, he can't redeem himself. That's what I'm saying. And because all men born of flesh inherit original sin, there has to be somewhere in that where the original sin is taken away, that that heritability is taken away. Can't happen with Christ. Cannot happen with Christ. Why? I've already answered why. Because God cannot redeem himself. To do that is to redeem somebody. Totally and completely redeem them. That's what we're talking about. Total and complete redemption. We're talking, basically what we're talking about here is having a glorified, or not a glorified, but a resurrected body, right? A body that's free completely from sin. Completely and totally from sin. Okay. Now, God could not do that for himself because to do that would be redemption. I know I'm repeating myself, but this point has to be very clear because this is more of an apologetics video for Protestants, right? Um, and so this is why it had to happen with Mary. Okay, but then there comes a different question, which is, why then? So now I've just proved, I've just given a proof for why we know that Mary was without sin, without any form of sin at all at the moment of Christ's conception. Completely impossible. It would be completely impossible. And I've just given proof, right? I've just given you a, a very solid proof for this using reason and at reason and logic here. Okay. So if you're a Protestant and you're watching this and you decide to just, you know, get very, you know, whatever, try to d dismiss this, you better be willing to come up with an actual solid argument instead of one that's not solid because this is actually very important stuff, right? You don't want to go before God on Judgment Day having heard truth and rejected truth and um, think that you're, you're just going to be okay, right? That's, that's not how it works. You have to answer for what you do. You have to answer for the choices you make. Um, so don't just reject this out of hand and come up with really dumb arguments. I know people do this sometimes. Come up with really stupid arguments that they know don't hold any water. They're just speaking emotionally. They're not using their uh, faculties of you know, logic, re reason, rationality, everything like that. They're just speaking emotionally about things, okay? Because I've just given you good proof for why Mary had to be completely without sin and why it could not, it, why, why that redemption could not have happened with Christ. 
could not have happened impossible, right? I'm not saying that there's no arguments against my position. There might be. I'm saying that don't I mean, you can do what you want, obviously. It's your soul. It's, it's, it's your eter eternal destination. But don't just dismiss this out of hand because, you know, um, your Protestant biases are getting in the way. You don't want that to happen, right? Okay. So there before we go. Um, so then the question is, is why... Why was Mary immaculately conceived? Like, isn't it possible for God to do this to Mary afterward? Well, I actually don't think so. Now, I'm a little bit less convinced of this next proof, but I think there's. I'm, I, th I think I'm getting somewhere with it, so I'm just going to share it shortly here with you. Um, there's other proofs you can go find for why this is the case. Like, you know, w w I mean. The, the obvious question is, is if God knew this was going to happen, right? He had to do this to his mother, okay? Um, so there's like that proof. It's like, well, why would God not do it right from the moment? I mean, it's going to be his mother. Why, why not prepare her from the moment of her conception all the way up until she actually conceived Christ to be the mother of Christ? You know, then there's the proof of you know, Satan having dominion over of, over her if she was conceived with sin and everything like that, right? Um, so th there's those proofs. But I don't, I mean, they're, they're, they're really good proofs. They make a lot of sense, but I'm, I'm not so sure if they make a lot of sense to Protestants. And so I, I'm, I tried to come up with a different one. Uh, not necessarily a better one, but I think one... I think that one that might make a little, little bit more sense to Protestants. I'm not, not sure about that, but here we go. So what happened to people who died before Christ? Anyone who died before Christ, what happened to them? They went to hell. Every single person who died before Christ went to hell. Now, why did they go to hell? Well, the gates of heaven were shut, right? Okay. Now, wait. Does that mean that Abraham was in hell? Yes, but, but, there's a big but there. He's in a different place in hell, right? We, we uh, know this because Christ descended into hell. Um, and, yeah, yeah. So there, there's other ways we know this, but yeah, Christ descended into hell. Okay, so they're in a place called like limbo or Abraham's bosom, the um, paradise of the patriarchs or something like that. Yeah, it's like a perfect paradise. When God says to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise, that's what he's referring to because that's where Christ went after his crucifixion when he died. That's where he went. Um, he went to preach to the souls in that paradise. He didn't go to preach the souls that were in like hellfire. No. And we know of this, right? There's this chasm between the two and they're both actually uh, the grave, right? They're both, um, you could call them hell, but one's like, we won't do that. Hades, let's say. They're both in Hades. This is in a different portion, this one, the paradise. It's actual paradise, Right, but it's not heaven. What's heaven? Well, heaven, you're in the presence of God and you see uh, the beatific vision, right? Okay, so what we can see is, is that they had merited some form of grace before Christ's crucifixion. But that grace that they had came from Christ's crucifixion. So there's like graces that transcend time and graces that did not transcend time, which is that there's things that could only happen after Christ had his resurrection, or I, I shouldn't say could only happen, but only did happen afterward, right? Um, and so what I'm saying here is what Mary had was a resurrected body, okay? That's what she would have had to have had in order to have conceived Christ because, again, of the proofs I gave, right? A resurrected body. Now, that doesn't mean it was 
had all of the qualities, necessarily had all of the qualities that our resurrected bodies will have. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I'm just saying it, you know, at least was a form of it. In the sense that it had absolutely no sin to, on it at all. Okay, so therefore, if she would have had that cleansing, that redemption happen, total and complete and final redemption, which is what she would have had to have received in order to have Christ, she would have had to have been resurrected, basically. Right? Oh, but resurrections happened before Christ. Ye not the same sort of resurrection we're talking about. We're talking about the resurrection in which we gain a it's actually the same body but it's a kind of like glorified body we could say something like that in the sense that it has absolutely no sin on it near it anywhere around it whatsoever right um totally and completely redeemed um that's the sort of body we will have at the re resurrection right now we have a body that is not totally and completely redeemed, right? Because our body is still fallen. Even though we, you know, if you're baptized, you'll have the stain of original sin removed, or if you've re recently gone to confession, um, you haven't been in any mortal sin, you've had the original sin removed. So you have sanctifying grace, but your body isn't totally and completely redeemed because you still have concupiscence, you still have the fallen nature, you're, you still have like sickness and stuff like that, um, which is all due to sin. Not, not, not saying that all sickness is because you, you did a sin, it's just because you're in a sinful body. Um, and so Mary would have had no, none of that. She was in a resurrected type of body. The same with Christ, right? He was in a resurrected body type body. That's what I mean when I say resurrected body. Resurrected type body. Okay, so this is why I believe that the immaculate, it had to have been immaculately, she had to have been immaculately conceived, right? Because we don't see the resurrections happening until afterward, until after Christ's resurrection. That's what it took. Um, and, and again, that's, I, again, why we have, why I think we have the fathers in limbo, why the gates of heaven were shut, because the crucifixion and resurrection had not happened yet. And so, if this was to happen to Mary, you know, let's say when she was a kid, it means that she would have had to have had like a form of resurrection happen, which was not going to happen until after Christ was resurrected. And we see this, right? Because after Christ was um, resurrected, there was many like holy men that actually resurrected as well and appeared to people in the city of Jerusalem. And then they went up to heaven. It was like a temporary thing. So and it says, it says appeared in, uh, I believe it says appeared, which means that it would have been like Christ being able to bilocate and stuff like that, which implies that they had a resurrected body, which they couldn't have had uh, before that. Um, which, which we see the resurrection not possible until Christ had the resurrection. Therefore, Mary, that's why I think it's the Immaculate Conception. I mean, there's other proofs and everything like that for that as well. Um, but this is, I think this is a different one. Um, and so, yeah, I, I hope that all makes sense. It makes sense, a lot of sense to me. Um, like I said, God could not have been immaculately conceived because that would imply that he's his own redeemer. That's impossible. Therefore, his mother had to have been immaculately conceived. She had to be totally and completely without sin whatsoever. Totally and completely. Or it would have been impossible for God to have been conceived in her. Okay. Then we go, well, why did that point of total and complete redemption have to be at the point of conception and not earlier? It's because the total and complete redemption, if it happens at conception, well, there's other reasons, but if it happens at conception, it's not a resurrection. If it happens later on, it's a resurrection, right? It's a transformation of 
the person's um, body. Or it's, it's something of the sort, right? So we don't see those resurrections happening until afterward. Yeah, so there's there's that, that sort of logic going on, right? Because <clears throat> I mean, I guess you could say that. No, I mean, and then the other the other points are there. I, I'm I'm not entirely convinced on that one. I mean, I think it's a good point, but there's there there is something I think going on there with the uh conception. And because it just, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense that you'd have this thing happening, the total and complete redemption of somebody happening after they're conceived. Um, because it's, it's, it's a different thing than it happening before their conception. And then the question is, well, why doesn't God do that to everyone? Well, because A, number one, they don't deserve that to happen to them. And number two, here's just like a point to consider. Um, maybe the Immaculate Virgin Mary was the only person in history who could actually be totally and completely redeemed and uh, live in this world. Maybe. I don't know, right? But again, you haven't merited it. And the only reason the Virgin Mary that that, that happened to was because the world needed redemption. God didn't redeem Mary just for Mary's sake. I mean, he did redeem Mary for Mary's sake, obviously, but it wasn't just that that total and complete redemption was not just for her sake. It was for the sake of all mankind so that the savior could come through her. Right. Um, again, yes, it was for her sake, just as your redemption is for your sake, but for, he did the total and complete redemption at the moment of her conception for the sake of all mankind. That's how important the Immaculate Conception is. It's very, very, very important. You would not be redeemed if it were not for Mary. Totally and completely impossible for you to be redeemed if it were not for Mary. So, um... Yeah, like I said, I think the red resurrection thing kind of plays a role there. Um, whereas Mary's body was conceived in that way. That's the way she was in which she was actually conceived, um, was in that resurrected form. And so, again, that, you know, I guess you could uh, disagree with that one a little bit. But, um, and again, you know, the other proofs, I think, really dr drive the point home, which is, it's like... Again, this is how important this Immaculate Conception is. All mankind's redemption hinges on the Immaculate Conception. It hinges on it. God cannot come into the world unless this happens. Okay, so why would God wait until later in her life to do it? Why would God wait until, let's say, the moment that the angel came to her or something like that to do it? No, he's not going to wait. Not only that, it's, it's his mother, you know, it's his mother we're talking about here. Of course we want his mother to be <laughs> um, prepared from the moment of her conception to uh, be the mother of God, right? Of course. So, there you go. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, you know, if you're a Catholic, maybe share this with some of your Protestant friends, see what they have to have to say. And uh, yeah, God bless. Thanks for watching. Bye.